All righty, so we're going to continue the theme of AI. We've got an awesome keynote coming up right now from uh, Gwen Peña Seguenza. Gwen is a, a cloud advocate at Microsoft. Um, also has an amazing YouTube channel, which you should 100% check out. How many of you have been using GitHub Copilot? Yeah? How many of you using VS Code? All right, well, fasten your seatbelts. This is going to be fun. Gwen. <laughs> Wow, thank you so much for plugging my YouTube. That was awesome, was not expecting that. Hi everyone, um, hope you're having a great All Things Open, meeting cool people, learning cool things. This is my first time here. This is actually my first time on a stage. Wasn't supposed to be here, found out a couple days ago, but we're gonna figure this out. Uh, do more using AI and GitHub, thank you. Yeah. All right, yeah, sure. <laughs> Like, great intro, yeah, I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft, been there for about two years. And um, I wanna start off by just surveying the room a little bit. We was already asked how many people use Copilot, but how many people use it like occasionally and not like fully committed to it? Just like kind of figuring it out, raise of hands. All right, cool, cool. Um, over a million developers use Copilot, which is astonishing. Um, and I found myself sort of trying to figure out what it actually means. Like Emily mentioned, like we have these tools available, we, and now it's our, up to us to figure out what it looks like for us. Um, developers are coding 55% faster, are 75% more fulfilled, which I have no idea how they track that. It's probably all that rejects that we don't have to write anymore, so we're like a lot happier, right? And then up to 46% of code is By Copilot to, good to go? Good to go? All right, cool. By Copilot for developers, which is awesome. And now with Copilot X, we have this same productivity, the same efficiency throughout chat, voice, PR, CLI. GitHub Universe is right around the corner. I'm sure plenty of really cool things are gonna be announced there, so be sure to check that out. And you know, we have AI now at every step of our, of our workflow, but all this sounds very lovely. And like I mentioned, back in August, I first saw this information. I'm like, well, what does this mean for me? Like, how do, how do I, how, I want to I wanna be 75% more fulfilled. Like, how do I do this? So as you all know, it's not something that you just install and you become very great, great at, right? It's like a skill. Like, everything else that we've learned in the tech field is something that we have to work on. We have to get better results. We have to learn from it. And then I can switch to like a handheld if that's easier. Wanna do that? Yeah. Is this one off? All right, cool, cool. I feel like a stand-up comedian now. All right. Um, yeah, so you know how they say when you wanna learn something, you gotta go and just build stuff with it, right? Which I think is great advice. And then, the good thing about being in the tech field is that we're always building something and we always like working with like the new thing because it's like one day it's serverless and the next day it's serverless is dead and then the next day it's containers and then the next day it's like containers are the worst thing that's ever happens in the tech industry and then we're back to monoliths, rinse, lather, repeat. But the important thing is that we're always trying to keep our skills sharp. So kind of had that going for me, right? But then another great piece of advice that people tend to give when it's like, what, do you, what should I build this? Well, build something that solves a problem that you have, which I think is great advice. So here is my problem. I am a .NET developer, which is not the problem. It's some context, all right? Any .NET devs? We need a, yeah, yeah, I love it. All 10 of y'all, you're my people. Um, <laughs> but I, the, the issue is I had a project that I wanted to build for a talk that I'm delivering later today. And I knew I want, I had the idea, and I knew I wanted to do it in Python, but I don't know Python at all. But I had some programming skills, so I was like, all right, let's figure this out. Uh, so I did what everyone does. Well, you, people usually buy domains, but I started a GitHub repo, because that's how you make a project official, right? And this was about three weeks ago. I procrastinated a lot, yes, please don't judge me. I know you all do it, but I started up a repo. How many people here are familiar with cloud certifications? Things like the AZ-104, AWS, GCP, oh, yeah, great. I love certs, I don't have many, but the, the ones that I do have 
uh, have made a big impact on, on my career earlier on, especially as a college dropout, I really needed anything that could give me a little bit of an edge on my resume. And search did that for me. I, I think it was 2017, it took me like six months to pass my first certification. And I remember one of the hardest parts being coming up with ideas for projects to build. And now because of stuff like on YouTube and advocacy, I, I get this feedback oftentimes from students and people who are taking certs, like, hey, like I wanna get hands on, like, how to, but I just don't know what to do. So there was my problem that I wanted to solve. So there's a lot here, but we'll step through it. This is actually the project that I ended up building. I have a VS Code and I have this extension called Thunder Client. I don't know if anyone's used it. It's one of my favorite extensions. It essentially allows you to work with APIs inside of VS Code. And uh, I have a prompt here that says, I think it's asking for a project idea for the AZ-104 certification, which is a cloud admin based certification. And my API returns a project name, a project description, services, skills, and overall steps to complete the project. Here's a snapshot of the UI. I have no artistic ability whatsoever. Like circle, I can't draw it, I can't. But this is something I put together and it works, so hey. Um, and alongside Copilot. This is a uh, like very general version of the architecture. I got hands on with stuff like uh, Python SDKs for cognitive ser services, uh, Azure OpenAI, Cosmos DB, Python Azure Functions, things like that. The meat and potatoes of the project is I implemented a vector search with these services. Anyone familiar with a vector search, what that is? No, don't worry, two weeks ago I had no idea. So expectations, low, all right? Now, a vector search, essentially there's like a bunch of data, like think about a lot of data and then multiply that by 100, or like 1,000, probably more. And then you have to find some kind of results against another set of data. So some really smart people figured out that, well, at scale, if you try to make these comparisons with their semantic meaning or their semantic value, it doesn't really work. It's slow, it's expensive, all that good stuff or bats of, I should say. So then they were like, why don't we create some numbers for the data called the vectors, which are in those uh, square brackets there, and then use those to run the comparisons. And they figured out that, hey, it works. How those numbers are compared depends on the algorithm you use, but that's overall how a vector search uh, it works. So back to my architecture here. The first set of data is the prompt that the user selects the certification, AZ-104, AZ whatever certification it is. Then I send that off to an uh, embeddings model that I have on Azure OpenAI. Generates the embeddings for me, and then I make a, that's the first part of my vector search, against a bunch of information that I have indexed in cognitive services. And that information is just stuff that I've manually pre prepared. All the uh, certifications that I've gone through, I've done some research, put together some relevant skills and services and stuff like that, and I've loaded that up into uh, my search index. And then I can say, return five similarities, or uh, five results, three results, something like that. And it does that. Then the original prompt and the uh, results are returned to a completions model on Azure OpenAI, and that uh, generates the completion for me, which is returned to the user. So again, three weeks ago, and I got sick halfway, so it's more like two weeks. Um, so two weeks ago, I knew nothing. Again, this is what my project looks like now. I'm very confident in the skills that I have now, and there's plenty of things that I want to work on implement and at some point put in production for sure. But before those two, three weeks, this is what I knew. And honestly, functions should not even be there, but it was gonna be too empty of a screen, so I didn't wanna like remove it. So this is what I knew, right? I had many moments of struggle, success. You know that itch that you can only scratch when you, you work through something technical and you figure it out, like, oh yes, it works, right? I had many of those moments too. And throughout all the ups and downs, I had Copilot. So I want to share with you a couple of things that I learned throughout this journey of actually figuring out what leveraging this, these tools look like for me. And the first one is this setup. There's a lot going on here. We'll break it down. But I like to call this my, my, my priming my brain setup. When we start a new project, we all go through t docs, tutorials, I don't know, books. There's like that phase where you're like trying to figure out what you're doing, right? I find that this setup for me works great for that. At the middle, we have some code that I found in a tutorial. Like, we don't, no one hears codes from scratch. Like, don't lie to me. Like, we all, we, yeah, we all start from somewhere, right? But we, we need to take the step of understanding what's going on, right? So this is essentially uh, defining parameters for my vector search, which again, I had no idea. So I have a line selected in here, which says the metrics parameter, right? On the top left, I have one of my favorite slash commands in uh, GitHub Copilot chat, which is the explains. 
I use this all the time, highly recommend you check it out. There's a couple of commands there. This is one of my favorites. And then essentially what's going on here is I've asked Copilot to explain this line for me. And this is how I worked through understanding this code. So now I know that Cognitive Search uses this algorithm called, give me a second because this word is difficult for me to pronounce, hierarchical navigable small worlds, all right? And there's a bunch of parameters that you need to set. Essentially it's an algorithm that will graph all your, your vectors in a multi-dimensional space. And in order to find similarities, it doesn't matter where they're located, it doesn't matter the, the, the size, it just matters how they're angled. So setting it to cosine is uh, essentially a parameter used when you're trying to find similarities. And again, I knew none of this before uh, getting started. And what I really like about this is like, you can continue asking questions, but you see there at the bottom in the blue, it's, it's, it will sometimes give you relevant questions to what you're asking, and it almost pushes you or encourages you to dig deeper, to understand more, which I really, really like. And on the right side, good old Markdown. I love Markdown for taking notes. It's important to, for me at least, to make sure I'm understanding, synthesizing. Later, this can turn into a blog post, this can turn into a YouTube video, share my learnings and continue nurturing the community. Um, altogether, this is something that I really like doing when it comes to figuring out what I'm working on. As you start writing code, or as I start writing code, Command I, invoke Copilot. You can ask a quick one-off question if you don't need more context. If you do need, do you need more context, you can switch into viewing it into the chat, which I really like. Um, I don't know about y'all, but I like not having to move to another application, another window, context switch. It does wonders for me to avoid distraction. I get distracted very easily. Um, another thing that I really like doing is this. We're familiar with creating comments to generate code. I have here a couple of comments. It's in that yellow there. Um, I think what Emily mentioned about prompt engineering is, is very true. It's not necessarily a skill that you directly have to go sit down like, oh, today I'm gonna study prompt engineering for two hours. I don't think that's it. It's more so the more you work with it, the more you develop a better understanding of what you're doing, the better you can explain it, and the better results you get. So it's sort of like a byproduct of working with it, right? So anyway, I have some, I have some uh, comments here to generate some code. And then if you hit Control Enter, or Command Enter, um, Copilot will synthesize, which is that right side there, synthesize some solutions for you. But then I like to take it a step further, highlight all the solutions, and ask Copilot, hey, which one of these is best? Which one fits best for me? And sometimes it'll tell you this, is, this solution is wrong, this solution returns the wrong status code, this solution will work, and you can ask it, why will this not work? Why will this work? And things like that, which when you're getting started with a new language, helps a lot. Someone to tell you what's right, what's wrong. Obviously, you still have to verify and all that good stuff, but that ability to verify information will come as you get better, right? Uh, finally, of course, Copilot is not perfect, and I'm a fan of using all the tools that you have available. Use them. If they're AWS tools, do it. If they're Microsoft, do it. If they're Google tools, whatever it is, do it. Because ultimately, it's about you becoming a more efficient and productive developer. I definitely have my modes of frustration. Here's a longer chat that I had. Um, with Copilot. Essentially, I'm trying to get it to, to make a system prompt for me, and it was very frustrating. It, it, it like couldn't do it. And these are two snippets. And obviously, my tone is neutral because, because I'm like, it's text, right? But that last one says, do you know what a system prompt is? But really, I was feeling like, do you know what a system prompt? Chuck the mouse kind of thing, right? And, it, and it, yeah, and it couldn't figure it out. I should file that as a bug. I will after. Um, but then I went to Bing. Shameless plug. Um, went to Bing, and after like a, an additional message, I got a, a good clarification in the system prompt. I tweaked it a little bit, but this is actually what's working, and, and it gives, it's given me great results. So I'm definitely more fulfilled. I don't know if it's 75%, but I'm working faster. I'm, I'm gaining a deeper understanding of what I'm working on, and I don't know about y'all, but for me, that, that definitely makes me feel happier with my work, more fulfilled and more content with my work. And Copilot has written a significant amount of code for me. Obviously, there's verifications, there's deeper understandings and things like that. But um, that leads me to my last question. How will you all do, more so in encouragement, to go and figure out, because it might be a different workflow for everyone, but how will you all do more with GitHub Copilot? Thank you so much.